I wasn't sure whether to make this because this community for some reason doesn't like criticism, especially on the subreddit. And people think my requests are absurd, even though they haven't demonstrated why. And but the thing is, there's, there's workarounds to everything I say, even if they're not 100% agreeable or even possible. There are things about it you can do. And this just reminds me of other things, like you don't see something that is hard to achieve but has a good outcome and think, let's not try that. Because that is literally a defeatist mentality. Also, just because a game is free to play, it doesn't mean when it does so, it does, doesn't mean it's more acceptable. It depends on the heart it does and the exploitative nature of it. Typically, when I make a serious discussion like this, it's to benefit someone or multiple people and take away the harm that it does in the phenomenon addressing trying to change, you know. The culture is inherently helpful by virtue of having gambling. It is gambling anyway, but it's just more than enough reason to call it out more and get a of us to change it, maybe. With that said, on to the video script. With the card game being introduced to Gameplay Impact in 3.3, I think, I think it's time to talk about how that might be more advised. I said might be, because it's definitely possible for it to be monetized, which would suck. Luckily the card game is casual friendly, so it probably won't be too bad. Like it might just be skins, but I don't know. But in their own words, that was. But it's clear that it's growing as a game, Virginia Impact, uh, but not in the way that it should. The fact that Shin Pats isn't really a positive word of mouth at the time of Sumero's release, it shows something is seriously wrong. Especially when on release, like 1.0, it was talked about so much, besides the journalists saying it's a Breath of the Wild ripoff, even though it didn't even compare to that shot anyway. Also, similar mechanics don't equate to copying. People compared Overwatch to Team Fortress 2 even though they're nothing alike. Makes me wonder what the trading card game will be compared to. Catch an impact. Season 2 of today's issue. Besides the worry of there being monetization on top of the shit we already have. I realised upon wasting my Primo gems on the recent weapon banner that the gotcha in its current state has no right to exist. Given how the game is, how big it is, and how many whales there are, it makes no sense to have a weapon banner. As of making this, Nikita has apparently taken the lead in terms of best selling banner. It makes sense given how game changing she is, on top of being the Dendro Archon and being cute. In a way, every character that releases broken ends up being free marketing, rather than the drip they cost they post. It was clear from Nahida's leaks, yes as far back as that, that she was different as a character. She was game changing in a different way. Not a must pull surprisingly, but pretty damn strong. Her attack animation, her idle animations, her interactions in the world, and her combat, and her passive, it's crazy to think about. And I like how she redefined the area of effect attacks, it's really clever, seriously. I don't think people give that enough credit, because I haven't actually seen anything like that in my 25 years of gaming. Or 20, I mean 20, not 25. Yeah, imagine if I play that long. But her law definitely gives off the vibe that she knows more than she lets on. And she ticks so many boxes for what people want. She's almost the perfect character, and that's why I predicted before her release. She would outsell Raiden Shogun. I didn't expect her to outsell Vinti though. But also, speaking personally off script here, her story resonates with me so much. Like, we're not, I'm not a god, obviously. But, there's just so much about her story that reminds me of my situation. 
Well, I feel like I'm in a prison. I want to be set free. Also, want to do good for everyone. Yeah, also, I just kind of want to have a personality that sort of resembles someone who is quote unquote cute. Things like that. It's weird how that resonates with me. I don't realise it until this patch actually. I probably should have realised it sooner. Anyway, I've enrolled on her. I have to say I'm satisfied with how she plays so far. Definitely fun to use. However, the weapon's banner makes no sense. I roll on these without thinking and I do actually regret every single weapon banner I've rolled on except for Arataki Hita. I lost my 50-50 to the Thunder and Pulse on this recent one when trying to get the heaters and wasted another 50 to get the heaters after the Thunder and Pulse which I wasted about 70 on. It isn't ideal. I say it's a waste because weapons just aren't worth the value in Genshin Impact compared to what a character delivers. So when I say weapon banner should be removed, it's a no-brainer at this point, isn't it? The simple fix is to have it be purchasable for a smaller price, maybe? Maybe as a microtransaction instead? The weapons add very little value compared to a, say, refinement drive rust, or maybe even just a free-to-play weapon, no wishes. You know, if you compare something like a refinement drive rust to a Primate 1 Thunder Impulse on Tartaglia. You'll see the results are pretty different, but not too bad. Like, you won't sacrifice much by using one or the other, besides a tiny bit of damage. The point is, uh, is that there just isn't any value to 5 stars overall. 5 star weapons are not significant. Yeah, I say a Thunder Impulse because I lost my 50-50 to that. And I'm definitely rolling on Tartaglia now because of that. Might as well make use of it, I don't know. So there is no value for weapons anymore. Well, there never was. Unless you can make use of the other weapon that you get. Like, the point that I'm making there is I was lucky to get Thunder and Pulse more in time for Tartaglia's banner because I think if I hadn't got that I'd be missing out on Tartaglia who is a Hydro DPS I was considering I was going to get Ayato but I don't like Ayato's design like his animations are cool but his personality is like the I prefer a fucking crazy guy in a child's body wait is it the other way around Uh, it's just not worth rolling. The truth is, you'd have more value by rolling on characters and also have more fun and more variety. Truth be told, I've only been down to zero premiums twice as a low spender. Once on Garnier 3 on, and I need to get Zongli to support her and so I had to buy crystals for him. And the other was Ayato when he first came out and Vinti's rerun. I was stupidly wasting my Prima Gems on the Venture Run and his weapon. His weapon. Just to emphasise that. The Elegy of the End. Stringless fits in better, but my god, it annoys me. I wanted Ayato too. And also regret pulling on Kazuha's weapon. Freedom Spawn, I think it's called. Because I, I could have gotten Yogi Mir instead to replace D Luke as a main pyro DPS. You know, the dumb thing about that, I remember I lost a 50-50 to Sacred Winds, I've lost Barra, whatever that one is. I have nobody can use it. I have to put it on Barbara because she does good enough healing anyway. So the damage actually helps. The point is that compared to a character's output, the weapon banner is not worth it. Who need us a good for a good team is a good artifact build and max talents possibly. I'm just character in general. 
That could be Hutel, Raiden, Galnu, Ayaka, Tonari, and I think Yoimiya probably counts because of the Rust. But I include Tonari because he's actually one of the strongest characters now with the Electro buff with Dendro. And the Quicken or Spirit, I think it is. This just means 5 star weapons of value less. And then use those that you get from 50-50s, I guess. But I have a uh, Scarlet Spine, and I'm going to use that on Freedom Shogun if I end up getting her. To be honest, I probably won't because I would have spent all my primos on Tartaglia. I think it's better value for my account with Nahida being there to get Tartaglia first. Yeah, I don't know, but it's complicated and this is the problem. Had I not spent all the weapon banners, I could have gotten Tartaglia, Raiden, and probably another Sumer character. But it just sucks. And this leads on to the next point. The character banner value. It's no doubt going to be controversial as usual in this damn community. The gacha has no place to exist, which in a, what is a really good free to play game. I can't recommend this game, literally. The gacha is the biggest toad you can lay on a game. It is absolutely insulting. It becomes revolting to a certain point because it just makes me sick sometimes playing it. Even though it's the most fun I could have. And definitely, I'm excited to play every day. It, but that thing is still there. Like, it just still feels off. I don't remember a few months ago, actually, we're going off the script again here. A few months, maybe a year ago. I was saying that I was going to give up on doing daily commissions to free up some time and also really spend resin because I'm happy with what I've got. But the thing with that is, is that sometimes the gameplay can be so good with some characters that you sort of have to roll. So you're just kind of stuck in this loop where if you don't play, like do everything in the game, you're going to fall behind and you're going to miss out. That is FOMO. Anyway, even though the game itself is actually incredible in terms of scale and the recent its story, it's still got big problems shadowing it. I haven't even touched on the gameplay issues like lack of quality of life, no gadget will, no artifact presets, artifact RNG, annoying cop matchmaking. It's got so many of these issues that wouldn't make sense since it is free to play, but the reason this is bad is isn't good for player perception. Especially where we have the gacha over it. Think about if this game had microtransactions instead. Fifteen pound per five star and five pound per four star and half the price for constellations. These would have sold well and people would actually probably spend more. And the anniversary can can give a free character to everyone because its value is low enough. You know, just speaking from the 50-50 uh, pool. Like the pool of stuff you can get. But we've run into this issue where the capture creates FOMO. And it inevitably creates power creep. Power creep FOMO, I call it. It's not very talked about for some reason, but there are definitely power creep characters in Genshin Impact. Like Nahida, for example. Just obliterates every exploration character of the ability to collect. I know what the Who vs. Strategy was moving into Sumeru. It was to release on the power characters first, so the other powered ones would be simple. We're no doubt getting the world on the Renex patch, and after that, either Dea or a hyphen or the uh, Yao Yao girl, the one that's been teased forever. This means most characters you get are being paracreated by newer ones. Somehow. Like Gazahar replaced Venti. 
Who you ever replaced Kalei and Trophila? Uh, that's like dangerous soft DPS, I mean. Raiden Choken replaces Keeching. Ki Keeking. No, I'll tell you, so I know. The new characters are just releasing are better than the previous. Yeah, that's also Yelvan replacing King Drew, for example. And being a good looking world character, too. Which is maybe because of the rolling for her, not gonna lie. But, and it's too early to say, we may be at a point where even these newer characters will be replaced eventually. There may be someone to replace the healer, who knows. I don't like the character weapon, the character banner, by the way, I mean. Also because of how many wishes it takes. I can't believe this whilst having a really bad shit. Like not in a turn, pain. It comes out to about 28k premium gems to get a character, if you're unlucky. 28k. You could only make that much primo gems over a few months of big game content patches, like doing all the exploration. And that's about 5-6 to six months of grinding. This is absurd. This needs to change. Like seriously. Sure you might get 4 star characters and you can make use of them. But players want the 5 stars and that's why your system is fundamentally broken. That's not good player reception. And you know, you'll definitely find it. There are going to be one star reviews on the game. Where people say, I rolled on this banner and I didn't get this character. And there's also going to be char characters, no, I mean users who say, I lost my 50 50 and so on. But the point is that people will view the game negatively because of something that is inherently negative. Like they see a character, they want it, and they don't get it. Like it's just. It's weird because it's different in the game context and people for some reason equate it to real life. Where you can't always get what you want. This is a fucking video game. Where it has no like real life impact. Other than making a dent in your wallet maybe. But that is the fundamental difference there. That it being fictional means you can you should be able to do anything. And I'm actually not opposed to this, but if it ever comes to that point, people should be allowed to mod Genshin Impact, regardless of the consequences. Because at this point, if you're not being allowed to play a certain character because of this stupid shit, like the gotcha and the artifact RNG, it's up to the player to sort of do whatever they want in that case, and Genshin Impact isn't even a multiplayer game, so it also makes no sense why it should be online all the time. It's gone upon those things where I think the game delivered well, and I think having these sort of is it safe locks? I don't know what you call it, safe proof, I don't know. But is that the safety mechanism is a Thing where you're forced to pay rather than have the option to pay. And that's why I feel it's fundamentally wrong to have a culture instead of microtransactions. It, it sucks. Anyway, I just have and there's bad things to say about the culture. Looking back on my past wishes, I wish I could be fine with no, I could be fine with refunding every 5 star weapon I have, except for Ito's and Garnu's. So is Tiao, who I regret rolling for as well, because he's just not a good anime DPS. Especially probably compared to the Wanderer. Genshin Impact is easily my top game of all time, or one of them. But for the reasons I keep saying above, it will be on the worst as well. There just isn't an excuse for these widely bad things that are called bad by a majority of the community. I want Genshin Impact to do well in the right circumstances. I just don't want it to do 
what this shit is. I'm not sure hoping the next version is garbage because of it. Oh, because of just its quality, I guess. And none of us has even taken into account the power creep of Sumeru's story. I sort of actually predict the story might get better, but it gets me thinking about of what else the game has that should improve. Season 2, the final thing. My only other solution to the culture is more of a middle ground. Is to have a new rerun banner every day. Because of the amount of characters in game, it makes sense to have this be a thing because some people don't really want to wait, but also it makes sense from a financial perspective. The same with the weapon banner. Have a main banner for a newly released character that's permanent for the patch and reruns for the second banner, including four stars that change each day. And you know, one weapon on the weapon banner should change to a non signature one, I guess. But it should be the signature for that head character, I guess. So. Well, at least address the fear of missing out, given they keep pity in the game. And it'll make it just more accessible. And I think the good balance about it, I think you should only allow it to players who have played for a while. Like a sort of an adventure rank, so it can't be exploited. Yeah, that's all I have to say on it though. Like this is just not about the end game at this point, because the end game is the fucking Hall of Fact RNG and the Gotcha. Like these are the two biggest cock blocks in the game that stop you from achieving things. It's not fun, really. I know people aren't focused on the meta, I forgot to mention that. For those of us sort of like half casual, half competitive, a bit like me, I guess. It's not fun. And if anything, it's just going to make you lose players. And I've seen it already. There's actually been a lot of players who've quit just before Sumeru. And actually, there's a lot of players who have had, if you don't play it, because of so much stuff to do. There's so much catch up and time monetization. It's really a game that benefits those that started early, which is also another problem because I think players who didn't start early should at least get some primo gems to just start out with. Like um, if it's like above a certain adventure rank, I mean, so you know you have to play it for a long time. And also with a third party account selling obviously that's bad and probably illegal there's definitely ways to prevent that but like better two factor, factor authentication would do it and I think you should have that for say like uh, when you're entitled to the rewards just a lot of discussion and planning I guess to get things right That's why I don't wish the engineer but does well now. Because it is unpleasant as fuck when you just can't get the characters you want. But any rational game that's designed well, if it has characters unlocked already, or you earn them through playing. But this isn't earning through playing, it's earning through FOMO.